your money your way, creating a financial plan that suits your lifestyle. Did you know that the average person could save over $1,000 a year just by making a few tweaks to their financial plan? That's enough for a luxury weekend getaway or to kickstart your investment portfolio. In today's video, we're going to explore how you can create a financial plan that not only takes care of your bill, but also fits your lifestyle. Whether you're a college student just starting out, a young professional looking to make the most of your income, a parent planning for your child's future, or someone nearing retirement, this video is for you. Understanding Financial Planning Many of us think of financial planning as a tedious task, something that's complicated and meant only for the rich and wealthy. But what if we told you that it's not? What if we told you that financial planning is something that each one of us can and should do? Think of it like planning a road trip. You wouldn't just jump in your car and start driving without knowing where you're going, right? You'd probably end up lost or even worse, out of gas. In the middle of nowhere, financial planning is the same. It's about setting a destination for your money and figuring out the best route to get there. We all have dreams and goals, right? Maybe you want to buy a house, start a business, travel the world, or retire early. These things, of course, require money. And without a financial plan, it's like trying to reach a destination without a map. You might eventually get there, but it'll probably take a lot longer and it'll be a lot more stressful. In simple terms, it helps you understand where you are right now. Decide where you want to be and then develop a detailed plan to get there. Assessing your current financial situation. Now, before we start planning for the future, we need to understand where we are right now. So yeah, let's talk about something that a lot of us avoid. Assessing our current financial situation. This includes everything from your income and expenses to your assets and liabilities. Income is, of course, all the money that's coming in. It could be from your job, side hustle, rental income, dividends, alimony, you name it. Add it all up, that's your total income. Next, the expenses are all the money that's going out. It includes everything from your rent or mortgage, utility bills, groceries, and car payments to your morning coffee, gym membership, and weekend getaways. And don't forget those pesky little expenses that we often overlook, like bank fees and subscriptions. They might seem small, but they can add up. Now let's move on to assets. These are things that you own that have value, like your home, car, savings, investments, even that vintage comic book collection that you've been hoarding since you were a kid. Yep, trust us, those worth a lot. On the other hand, the liabilities, well, these are all the money that you owe, like your mortgage, car loan, student loan, credit card debt, or money that you borrowed from your brother-in-law. Once you've gathered all this information, it's time to do some math. Subtract your expenses and liabilities from your income and assets. The result is your net worth. This is a key indicator of your financial health. With a clear picture of our current financial situation, what's the next step? Up next, we'll talk about SMART financial goals. Setting financial goals. If you don't know, SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time Bound. Your goal should be clear and specific. Instead of saying, I want to save money, say, I want to save 10,000. This gives you a clear target to aim for. Your goal should be measurable. This means that you should be able to track your progress. If your goal is to save 10,000, you can measure your progress by how much you've saved each month. Your goal should be achievable. It's great to aim high, but your goal should be also realistic. If you're currently living paycheck to paycheck, saving 10,000 in a month might not be achievable, but saving 200 in a month, that's more like it. Your goal should be relevant to your life and your values. If you're passionate about travel, saving for a dream vacation is a relevant goal. If you're planning to start a family, Saving for a down payment on a house might be a relevant goal. Lastly, your goal should have a deadline. This creates a sense of urgency and can motivate you to stay on track. So instead of saying, I want to save $10,000, 
Say I want to save $10,000 in the next two years. No, wait, let's just put it all together. A smart financial goal could be something like this. I want to save $10,000 for a down payment on a house in the next two years by setting aside $417 each month. See how that works? It's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And it's tied to a lifestyle goal, owning a home. So we've set some smart goals, but how do we achieve them? Don't go anywhere as we're about to create a budget that reflects your lifestyle. Creating a budget. We know the word budget can sound a bit scary. It might bring to mind images of endless spreadsheets, complicated calculations, and a whole lot of sacrifice. But no, it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, a budget is simply a plan for your money. And just like any good plan, it should reflect who you are and what you value. Let me share a short story for better understanding. I once knew a woman named Lisa. Lisa loved to travel. She dreamed of visiting every country in the world. But of course, there was a problem. Lisa was living paycheck to paycheck and didn't have any extra money to put towards her travel fund. So Lisa decided to create a budget. She listed her income and expenses, set a monthly savings goal, and allocated a portion of her income to her travel fund. To make her budget work, Lisa made some changes to her lifestyle. She started cooking at home more often, cut back on shopping, and even started a side hustle to earn extra money. And guess what? Within a year, Lisa had saved enough money to take her dream trip to Italy. That worked out for Lisa. But how do you create a budget that reflects your lifestyle? Here's a simple guide to follow right after this video. Number one, identify your income. This is all the money you expect to earn in a given period, like salary or business income, rental income, or even dividends. Number two, list your fixed expenses. These are expenses that don't change much from month to month, like rent or mortgage, car payments, insurance, premiums, etc. Number three, list your variable expenses. These are expenses that can change from month to month, like groceries, utilities, entertainment, etc. Number four, set aside money for savings. This is the money you plan to save for your financial goals. This is probably the most important, so get it right. Number five, allocate money for lifestyle expenses. This is the fun part. This is where you get to decide how much money you want to spend on things that enhance your lifestyle, like dining out, traveling, hobbies, etc. There's a key here. Your income should be equal to your expenses, plus your savings. If it's not, you'll need to make some adjustments. Maybe you need to cut back on some expenses, or maybe you need to find ways to increase your income. The goal is to create a budget that allows you to live the lifestyle you want while also moving you closer to your financial goals. There are also many tools and apps out there that can help you implement your financial plan. Apps like Mint, YNAB, you need a budget and pocket guard can help you track your spending set budgets and save for your financial goals remember lisa our travel loving friend after her trip to italy she decided that she wanted to travel more often so she reviewed her financial plan and made some adjustments she allocated more money to her travel fund and looked for ways to cut back on other expenses she also started investing some of her savings to grow her travel fund faster so keep in mind that a financial plan is not set in stone. It should evolve with changes in your lifestyle and financial situation. Therefore, make it a habit to review and adjust your financial plan regularly. This will ensure that your plan stays relevant and continues to guide you towards your financial goals. Well, that's it for today. So what are your financial goals? How are you planning to achieve them? Do you have any tips or tricks of your own that you'd like to share? Drop your comments below. Before you go, don't forget to check out our recent video on Top 10 Money Saving Tips for Millennials. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.